Thank you for stopping by HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at several examples of solving equations with radical expressions. Now, solving equations with radical expressions can be a little bit tricky because we absolutely must check our solutions at the end. We can end up with what's called an extraneous solution, which is something that appears to be a solution, but it wasn't actually in the domain to begin with, and therefore is not a solution at all. This can happen because the technique we use for solving equations with radical, radical expressions is we're squaring both sides. And when you square a negative, it turns it positive, which can be a little bit deceiving. So sometimes we end up, when we check our work, with 2 equals negative 2, which is a false statement. So we just want to be careful that we check our solutions in the end. Our first example, we have the square root of p minus 3 equals p minus 3. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the radical, if possible, is by itself. It already is, so we're good to go. Now what we do is we can square both sides. Um, when we square both sides, we square the entire side. So you don't do each individual piece, you do the entire side. Here, the square and the square root will cancel, giving us p minus 3. Here, we want to be careful that we're applying the binomial square formula and not just squaring the individual pieces as I just warned against. So that would be if we have x minus y quantity squared, which we have here that would become x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So it's going to be the first term squared, p squared, the product of the two terms doubled, minus 6p, and plus the second term squared, minus 3 squared is positive 9. Now what we're left with is a, we have a quadratic. We have a p squared, it's not going to cancel, so we want to set this equal to 0 because that's the strategy we use when we have quadratics. That means I'm going to subtract p from both sides and add 3. Subtract p, add 3. This gives us 0 equals p squared minus 7p plus 12. And now we want to see if it's factorable, because if it is, that's great. If it's not, then we have to resort to quadratic formula or completing the square. The good news for us, this is factorable. We have a target product of 12 and a target sum of negative 7. And we get to use a shortcut since the leading coefficient is 1. Um, two numbers that multiply to positive 12 and add up to negative 7 are negative 4 and negative 3. So it will be p minus 4 times p minus 3. Now we have two factors that their product is 0. That means one of the factors must be 0. So we set each one equal to 0. p minus 4 equals 0 gives us p equals 4. p minus 3 equals 0 gives us p equals 3. And now we check both solutions. It is possible that both 4 and 3 are actual solutions and neither are extraneous, but we have to check anyway. So let's check p equals 4. If I, if I plug in 4 for p, we get the square root of 4 minus 3. And we really, really don't know if these are equal, so we need to put a question mark over the equal sign. Does that equal 4 minus 3? 4 minus 3 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1 and 4 minus 3 is 1. So we end up with 1 equals 1, that's a true statement, so we're good with 4. Now we're going to check p equals 3. That would be, does the square root of 3 minus 3 really equal 3 minus 3? The square root of 3, well 3 minus 3 is 0, the square root of 0 is 0, and 3 minus 3 is 0. We get 0 equals 0, there's a lot going on there. That is a true statement, so in fact both solutions are valid. You might want to write this out so your instructor knows that you know what you're doing. We get 3 and 4 is our final solution. Yay. All right, in another example, we want to make sure the radical is by itself, which it is. And once it's by itself, we can square both sides. t plus 5 quantity squared, first term squared, plus the two roots doubled will be 10t plus 25. Over here, the radical and the radical... Uh, the exponent will cancel, leaving us with 2t plus 9. I see again we have a quadratic that t squared is not going to cancel. I'm going to move everything to the left-hand side this time, put 0 on the right. We're going to subtract 2t and subtract 9. And that gives us t squared plus 8t plus 16 equals 0. Um, this is a perfect square trinomial. If you don't recognize that, that's okay. What ends up happening is we end up with t plus 4 times t plus 4 when we factor. Since it's the same factor, you only need to set 1 equal to 0. So we can say t plus 4 equals 0 and t equals negative 4. 
All right, this is kind of an all or nothing situation. Either t equals negative four, or we have no solution. Let's see what we have. So we're gonna check t equals negative four. That would be negative four plus five. Does that really equal the square root of two times negative four plus nine? Well, this is one. And here we have, that's negative eight plus nine. That's the square root of one, which equals one. Hey, it worked. We have one solution, t equals negative four. Another example, again, we wanna make sure the radical is by itself. If it wasn't, if there was like a plus six over here, we would definitely wanna subtract six from both sides. Uh, to make sure that the radical is by itself. Because if it's not, if we had a plus six over here and you squared this side, you would have to do the, the binomial square because you would have two terms and that's not gonna be pretty. So make sure it's by itself. And we end up with three X minus 20 equals, this will be first term squared minus the two terms doubled minus 12 X plus the second term squared plus 36. Again, we have a binomial, so we're going to set it equal to zero. I'll subtract three X and add 20 to both sides. That gives me zero equals X squared minus 15 X plus 56. We're hoping this is factorable. We'd be looking for two numbers whose product is 56 and whose sum is negative 15. I know just the numbers, negative seven and negative eight. We can use the shortcut since the leading coefficient is one. That would be X minus eight times x minus seven, set each one equal to zero, x minus eight equals zero, in which case x equals eight. Here we have x minus seven equals zero, in which case x equals seven. Those are the two potential solutions, but we do need to check both of them. It's really important that we check both to make sure they both work and we're not dealing with any extraneous solutions. So starting with x equals eight, is it true that three times eight minus 20 the square root of that is the same thing as eight minus six. Well, three times eight is 24. 24 minus 20 is four. The square root of four is two. Over here, eight minus six is two. It did in fact work. Checking with seven. Is it true that the square root of three times seven minus 20 really equals seven minus six? Three times seven, that's 21. 21 minus 20 is one. The square root of one is one. And seven minus six also equals one. So we did end up with two solutions. We wanna make it very well known that we know there are two solutions. Put a box around both of them. Rewrite it as just one thing, x equals seven or eight. Whatever it is, make it very clear you know. Let's see, a few more examples. So in this one, the radical is by itself, so we can square both sides. Here, the, radican, uh, the radical and the exponent cancel. We end up with y plus nine. Here, we can use the binomial square. That's y squared plus 14y plus 49. We do have a quadratic, just like we've seen with all the other examples. So we're gonna set it equal to zero. We get zero equals y squared plus 13y plus 40. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to 40 and add up to 13. That would be eight and five. So we can use the shortcut y plus eight times y plus five. Set each factor equal to zero. y plus eight equals zero. That means y equals negative eight. Here, y plus five equals zero. That means y equals negative five. And we wanna check to make sure these both in fact are valid solutions. So we're gonna check y equals negative eight. Is it true that the square root of negative eight plus nine is equal to negative eight plus seven. This is gonna be one and the square root of one is one. But here, negative eight plus seven is negative one. Those don't match up, that is not a true equation. Negative eight gets thrown out. Now we need to check negative five. It's all on the line here, either negative five is the solution or there is no solution. Does the square root of negative five plus nine really equal negative five plus seven? This is four, the square root of four is two. Here, negative five uh, plus seven is two. Two equals two, we're good to go. So we do end up with one solution, y equals negative five. And our last and final example, we have the radical all by itself already, so yay for that. We're gonna square both sides. This will give us y plus seven equals y squared plus 10y 
plus 25. Set it equal to 0. And that gives us 0 equals y squared plus 9y plus 18. We're looking for a target product of 18, a target sum of 9. That would be 6 and 3. And we set each factor equal to 0. y plus 6 equals 0, so y equals negative 6. y plus 3 equals 0, so y equals negative 3. We want to check to see, are these solutions or are they extraneous solutions? So we check y equals negative 6. We end up with the square root of negative 6 plus 7. Does that really equal negative 6 plus 5? I think the answer here is going to be no. This is the square root of 1, which is 1. This, however, is negative 1. That didn't work. Negative 6 gets thrown out. Next, we need to check y equals negative 3. Does the square root of negative 3 plus 7 really equal negative 3 plus 5? Well, negative 3 plus 7 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. And here, negative 3 plus 5 is 2. 2 equals 2. Good to go. So we have one solution, y equals negative 3. And this has been a lesson on solving equations with one radical expression.